everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today, Saving Time and Money, Why Cloud Integrations Matter. Just before we get started, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. So all the callers will be muted. So if you um, have questions, there's a chat box that you should see on the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, if you lose your Internet connection, just use the link that was emailed to you and then re-log in using that unique URL. Um, if, you have, uh, if you have to drop off or if you want to watch the webinar once it's over, um, the webinar will be hosted on our website at techsoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. Um, you'll also be receiving an email with the presentation, the recording, and all relevant links. If you're on social media, feel free to send us a tweet at TechSoup using hashtag TSWebinars. Um, but again, we'll be checking the Q&A box on the left-hand side of your screen, so feel free to ask questions as we go along. So just a little bit about TechSoup. We are in 236 countries and territories, and we work with over a million nonprofits um, providing hardware and software, uh, either donated um, or discounted. Um, so we, just to give you guys a chance to use the chat box, if you want to type in where you guys are calling in from, and I can read a few of them out just to make sure it works. So we have Arizona. That's nice. It must be warm, warmer than here. Uh, Texas, uh, Denver, San Francisco, someone near us, Kentucky, Oregon. Do we have anybody calling or dialing in internationally? Um, not yet, but I see Alaska, which is far. Um, cool. Okay, so it seems like it works. All right. So we work with uh, several technology partners. Adobe, Intuit, Microsoft, uh, Symantec, just to name a few. And then obviously today we have three of our, our technology partners here, DocuSign, Okta, um, DocuSign, Okta, and Box.org. And all of these organizations are part of an initiative that TechSoup is also now helping out with called Pledge 1%. So if for those of you who don't know about Pledge 1%, um, Pledge 1% partners with leading organizations to encourage early stage companies that they work with to make giving back a priority. So Box.org, DocuSign, and Okta, um, who are all on this webinar today, are part of this amazing initiative and have taken the pledge to donate 1% of uh, their company's equity, time, product, and or profit. profit. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce our speakers today. So we have three speakers. Uh, Brian Breckenridge, Amy skeeters Barons, and Aaron Baudot-Felter. So Brian Breckenridge, um, he is with Box.org, and he is the Executive Director, and he leads their effort to empower nonprofits and partners around the globe. Um, and then we also have Amy skeeters Barron, who is the Executive Director of DocuSign Impact. And prior to DocuSign, she spent 10 years at eBay where she held various leadership positions in the company's philanthropic units. And most recently, she served as COO for Reputation for eBay market Marketplaces, overseeing business operations, strategy, and planning globally. And then we also have Erin Baudot-Felter, um, who you may recognize if you attended our webinar a couple weeks ago. She is the founding executive director of Okta for Good, um, which is Okta's corporate social impact initiative. And she's worked at the intersection of business and social impact for over a decade and has had various corporate social impact roles at Zynga, Yahoo, and Warner Brothers. So I am now going to pass it off to Brian. So Brian, if you're, if you're there, um, you can take control. Yeah, absolutely. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Fantastic. Well, it's an honor to chat with everyone here today. So glad to know that, that dozens of organizations are interested in, in bringing cloud technology to their organizations. Wanted to start here with a poll just to make sure that, that a lot of you folks who are sweet to tell us where you are radioing in from today, but also love to hear from you about which of you truly feel like you understand what cloud means in the context of technology. So if you could jump into the first poll that's being provided here. You complete the poll by just uh, clicking on one of these radio buttons and clicking Submit. So again, working on learning theory to keep you engaged. Looks like we're somewhat as well out in the lead with definitely to follow. I think if we had done this call a year ago, we would have seen a lot more it's weather related, right? Question mark. 
So thanks a lot for answering that quick poll. It looks like everybody here has a basic example, and we're not going to build too much on that basic example today, but certainly happy to, to answer even more sophisticated questions as we advance uh, in our relationship with all of you all. So in answering the quick question of what is the cloud, I think what we know for sure the cloud is not, which this is actually me at the nonprofit tech conference last year, or last week rather, down in New Orleans wearing a cloud jacket. This is not necessarily what we mean when we're uh, referencing what is the cloud. And hopefully there's a few of you uh, smiling or, or at least providing some props. When we arrived, on the left is Chantal from Technology Alliance Group, uh, and then a, a thought leader in philanthropy there on my left on the right of, of the screen. And all of us had these very vibrant jackets uh, and almost thought we could be doing a, a jacket best practices uh, uh, panel as opposed to a technology and funding technology conference panel. But anyway, uh, the cloud is more cloud computing. So it's, it's a layer of, of technology that makes the technology that you're accessing available securely through the internet instead of hosting the application on premise. And for those of us that have spent the last decade or more working uh, for cloud organizations that care a lot about nonprofits, we're really excited to see these technologies get more and more accessible. And certainly DocuSign, Okta, and Box are no exception to that rule. So many of the, the pioneers in cloud computing, uh, which these three organizations that we work for uh, supporting nonprofits represent, uh, but there, there are certainly many other, uh, frankly, hundreds of technologies that nonprofits are starting to access that are delivered in a cloud-based manner, uh, taking some of the, the, the challenges of managing on-prem technology off of your shoulders. And uh, there are about seven of those cloud companies that I'm going to let uh, my good colleague Aaron tell you about now in an initiative we started a year and a half ago together called the Impact Cloud Initiative. Over to you, Aaron. Great. Thank you, Brian. Um, good morning, everyone. So as Brian said, there are, there are many, many, many cloud companies. Um, and increasingly, there are um, cloud companies who are stepping up and saying, we care deeply about helping nonprofit organizations fulfill their missions with our technology. Uh, and so Impact Cloud um, is a coalition, a group of these companies. You can see us all here represented on the screen working together to improve nonprofit access to and adoption of cloud technologies, the goal of which is to help them boost efficiency, streamline operations, Increase and increase their impact. Um, you're going to hear from three of us today, and um, I want to just give you a preview of what you're about to hear. At the simplest level, this is kind of what the three of us care about as companies. Box cares about the files you manage, and Brian is going to hop back on and talk more about that. Um, DocuSign, which Amy is going to talk to, cares about you getting your documents signed quickly and efficiently. And then at Okta, we really care about helping you manage the people who access your technologies. So at the simplest level, that's what we all do. That's what we care about. And all of these things together are really about helping to make you more efficient, more productive, more secure, which is increasingly important, um, and focus on the activities that drive your mission. So we hope that you kind of listen to the next few segments with all of this in mind, uh, and we look forward to your questions uh, after that. So I am going to now turn it back over to Brian, who's going to walk you through Box. Thank you very much, everybody. So let's start with another poll. I'm just going to ask the, the close to 100 of you that, that are assembled here, how many of you are familiar with Box as a, as a cloud content management platform and or our social impact initiative called Box.org? So maybe we'll, we'll reduce this to how many of us are aware of Box from a technology perspective, not so much a volunteering or grant making uh, or advocacy uh, lens. Through those th uh, advocacy lens, let's look through the technology lens. Are people using Box to manage their content, aka their files? Or are they familiar but not using it? Perhaps you've heard of it but not totally clear on what in the heck Box can do. Uh, or what in the heck is Box.org? So we'd love to, to just know a little bit more about who's here and can engage my comments over the next few minutes accordingly. So skipping through to the results, it looks as, as though almost half of us answering the poll are saying, what is Box or what is Box.org? And so that again is, is very, very helpful. Looks as though 
eight or ten percent of you are are familiar and, and using Box today on a donated or or a discounted basis. So that gives me a, a really good sense. We need to to really stay at that. You know what what is Box generally level? And so the response or the answer there is that Box is a cloud content management platform that's housed in the cloud, and it helps you as an organization, regardless of your size, be it volunteer only or maybe you represent the IT team in a, in a really large international nonprofit, but we're going to help you store and share and manage all of your files in one place. And as this graphic represents, when I speak to files, this means all of the files that your productivity applications like Microsoft and Google with the words and the G Suite and the GDocs and all those things represent, but also all of the pictures or the videos or the audio files, well over 100 file types are the types of files that we help organizations centralize, control, and then start to store and manage in a more productive way with their internal teams and with their external teams. And so we're currently in the position, uh, in a grateful position, very grateful position, of serving over 80,000 organizations in the commercial and the nonprofits, governments, and educational world on our file management or cloud content management platform. And so Lots of large brands that are household names are, are familiar with, with the Box technology and trust us and use us to manage their different file types. But we also have lots of really small organizations. We currently are uh, serving about 2,500 nonprofits that pay us a dramatically discounted rate to store their, their content on our platform. But we're also serving three or 4,000 organizations, depending on how you define that, uh, on a donated basis. And certainly we rely heavily on, on TechSoup for their incredible services and community building for, for facilitating our, our donation program. So lots of great organizations to draw some of these now examples from. Box certainly is, is a place that replaces a lot of just basic storage drives that nonprofits may spend a bit of money on every year updating or, or frankly are paying for the amount of storage that they have on a shared drive that either is in their offices, behind their networks, or out on the web. We also see lots of organizations using Box to replace large file transfer vendor technologies that tend to be pretty costly to move that video around to a donor can often, with the large file uh, transmission systems, be quite expensive. And so we're seeing organizations now be able to access all of their files from inside and outside of the office. We're seeing those organizations build workspaces, you know, like folders. Maybe they're writing a grant, for an example, and there may be a hundred different files, be it the, the reporting from the field and the images from the communications volunteer, and maybe some, some insights from the board as you're writing the, 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 the chairman's intro letter. All of that sort of thing tend to be separate files that have separate versions and are living with separate people and separate departments. And Box tends to be a great central workspace for that type of work, like an annual report or a grant application, uh, to get created more, more quickly and more securely. Certainly, we're improving the collaboration. Uh, show of hands, though, it'll be virtual, and you'll just have to do it there in your office or your home office. But you know, how many of us have attached the board minutes uh, to an email out to the board after a monthly board meeting? and sent it out via email. And I would imagine a lot of hands would still go up in that environment. Not very secure, not very productive, and su super hard for, for folks to then go back to those board minutes from previous meetings. And so technologies like Box really address those types of collaboration scenarios. And certainly, we, we just like Okta and DocuSign want to keep your security top of mind. So we're definitely, as an organization, uh, with our technology and with our the adjoining volunteering programs and grant making programs supporting both operating organizations as well as grant making organizations. We know that raising the right support, being administratively sound, planning, executing, and measuring programs, and telling your stories can be a very file or document heavy sport. And we know that those are mostly all collaborative, either collaborating internally or externally processes in your organization regardless of size or subsector uh, in the nonprofit world, but we want to support you on that. And we also are very well aware that for the grant makers on today's call, you have to maintain a relationship with your grantees, with your program managers, and other partners. And we want the files 
in those collaborations to be managed in a very secure and easy to use place. So just quickly before I pass the, the baton over to one of my awesome colleagues, I just wanted to say that Box.org is the name of our initiative. Nonprofits, those thousands of nonprofits use the same technology that people from all the other sectors that use Box uh, is housed, but the initiative called Box.org is where we engage our employees and our brand and our Box.org fund, uh, which is our donor advised fund, and all of the other assets that, that we channel toward nonprofits under the Box.org umbrella. And so today's call is more about the technology, but certainly over time are, are excited to introduce our, our other resources like our people and our brand and our community spaces and our, tech, and our facilities and, and, and voice and advocacy uh, as well behind your mission. We focus a lot on youth, humanitarian aid, and diversity and inclusion from a specific issue area basis. But, um, but again, today's call is more about the technology. We just be, thought we'd be remiss if we didn't also share with you the other things we do. And you can learn a lot more about us at box.org. So now passing it, uh, well, I guess I've got one more note here. Our program with TechSoup has, has been amazing. Uh, two Januarys ago is when we started it up. Many thousands of organizations have come through and begun using you know, Box. We make 501c3s and a global equivalent eligible for, for Box to manage their uh, organizational content. We have three current offers on the TechSoup um, uh, forgot exactly what you'd call it, but in their gallery of solutions, I say. And one is a donated access to the starter edition of Box for 10 managed users for your organization. And some very small organizations will utilize the donated Box for a staff member or two and some board members, and that'll be sufficient for them. And we offer 100 gigabits of free storage in those sites uh, with a very small administrative fee that you pay one time to TechSoup to help build their community. Uh, then we, we round trip you back and help you get your, your site set up. We also help for organizations who have to start integrating more deeply with other solutions or need a lot more storage, maybe unlimited storage, or need to have their box system talk to a lot of other, um, you know, talk to a lot of external collaborators. We have upgraded editions of box donated at 50%, and we have an over 25 staff and under 25 staff offering on TechSoup that, that we're happy to, uh, to align the right channels to support you on, should those seem interesting, and certainly look forward to, to answering any questions you have in the chat. So passing it off to my uh, outstanding colleague now, uh, DocuSign, Amy skeeter Barons. Awesome, Brian. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. By way of introduction, again, this is Amy skeeter Barons, and I'm the Executive Director of DocuSign Impact, which is DocuSign's global initiative to accelerate the digital transformation of nonprofits through our people, our products, and our profits. Uh, as Seema mentioned, we are a pledge 1% company. Our employees get volunteer time off. We offer donations and or discounted products to most nonprofits globally. And we recently formalized our commitment to the DocuSign Impact Foundation, indicating our intention to donate $30 million in cash and stock to the foundation over the next 10 years primarily focused on employee-directed giving. Uh, I'm especially pleased to join my colleagues and my friends from Box and Okta today, along uh, with, of course, friends from TechSoup to talk about how um, DocuSign along with Box and Okta can save time and money that you can then put towards fulfilling your really important missions. For DocuSign, there, there are three areas that we frequently highlight as benefits of the product, uh, which are the ROI, improved compliance aspects, and the overall improved service levels with a variety of stakeholders, both internal and external to an organization. And my hope is that some, uh, through some examples and a, uh, a very lo-fi demo of our product, those benefits uh, will be clear to, uh, to everyone. Uh, but first, we wanted to start with a quick poll to gauge the level of familiarity with DocuSign's product. Uh, so you can see the poll right here. I'm going to hit skip to results. Familiar but not using it, using it our, our org now. About 15% heard of it but not totally clear. What's that sign? Okay, super. Well, for the, uh, I think we'll, we will hit the sweet spot and uh, hopefully all of you will take something away uh, from my remarks. So to understand what DocuSign does, let's first talk about the problem. The problem in a nutshell is paper. And spoiler alert, DocuSign's goal is to take paper out of the equation. We frequently talk about how paper is the enemy internally. Uh, I'll ask you, I, I put up one example here uh, from a, a very common use case that nonprofits have, 
but I'll also ask you to think about an example from your work where you have something that needs to get signed, something you know, that requires data inputted by someone else uh, or perhaps you know, multiple parties. And you know, as I mentioned, one of the most common use cases for documents signed by nonprofits is volunteer waivers. I found this one online and grabbed a snippet by way of example. And in your example, you know, maybe your document is paper, maybe it's a Word doc or a PDF, and it needs to get signed. So either you print it to give, some, give it to someone to sign, or you send it via email, they download it from your site, and then they have to print it and sign it and get it back to you. Maybe they scan it, maybe they drop it off, maybe they mail it, maybe they bring it in, maybe they bring it to the event. Uh, and most likely, it's some combination of all of the above, creating you know, quite a, a management hassle. So you've had the challenge on the front end of getting them the document, getting it signed, and then the management challenge on the back end. So how does DocuSign help? DocuSign, in a nutshell, makes it easier to get these documents, uh, documents like this, I should say, filled out and signed more quickly from any device, any time, any place. And importantly, it keeps them all in the cloud so that they are able to be accessed on the management side from any device, any time, anywhere. Uh, so you can see in this particular example, this, was, this is a document I received. Uh, my name and email were already populated because the sender had uh, indicated that uh, in DocuSign, uh, and then I had some options to, some required options to fill in information, and then it was uh, DocuSigned with my uh, standard DocuSign signature, and the date of the signature was added. <clears throat> so this is one, as I mentioned, very common use case for DocuSign, but there are really many others. These include fundraising, uh, grant applications, membership renewals, uh, corporate sponsorship contracts, uh, they include human resources use cases, policy distribution and acknowledgement, new hire paperwork, uh, change forms, promotions, uh, compensation, et cetera, volunteer management, as we've discussed, waivers, event registration, applications, uh, procurement, legal, finance, IT. Um, there are a whole, dozens and dozens of use cases that nonprofits uh, in particular use, as well as really any of the hundreds of thousands of customers that DocuSign currently have. So one thing, that I, one thing that I found to be helpful, and again I mentioned a, a demo light, is um, just to walk through uh, the product very quickly in a few screenshots, which I think uh, brings to life how truly easy it is to use DocuSign uh, for a use case like I've just described uh, or one of these others. Let me just move this slide. There we go. So I just want to walk you through the really quickly five steps. So once you have DocuSign, this is your DocuSign dashboard. Uh, on the, the home page here, and I'm going to switch to my little green arrow here. On the, the home console of DocuSign, the step one is sign or get signatures, new. Go to send an envelope. Then it gives you uh, options uh, in this second phase here to uh, upload a file from your desktop uh, to use a template that you might have created like a volunteer waiver where you've, you have uh, basically just said this is something that I send out a lot and just pull that in, or to get from the cloud. And so you see here several, several options, Box being our, uh, you know, one of our preferred partners and easiest ways to get documents into DocuSign and, and I should say on the back end, send them right back to Box where you got them from for really easy management. Uh, and then once you've got the document uh, uploaded, you add the recipients that need to get it over here. So I've added Brian who needs to sign it, Aaron needs to receive a copy, and then our, the legal team of this uh, nonprofit would also receive a copy. So not only do you get the key signature you need, but you also get it routed to the folks that need to have a copy. Uh, and these are just a, a handful of the, the simplest um, things that you can do with DocuSign for illustrative purposes. Nick, can you so sweat just a little bit to see itself. us next to the legal teams there? Just sweating a what, little I'm, bit that, that uh, just sweating a little bit that, that our names are, are just a, makes me sweat a little bit that the, the legal teams are associated <laughs> with, with Aaron and I just a little bit there. That's okay. Okay. It's all 100% compliant, man. DocuSign is all okay, about good. security and compliance. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, so in terms of our, back to our, our use case with this volunteer waiver and release form, you saw the, the finished product uh, that was fully completed. And this is, this is a little bit of the sausage making. So you as the sender of the document, 
and you're sending it to the person that's going to be the signer, you would, ta you would basically, from this little drop and drag menu here on the left, you would drag in the full name of the person that's receiving it. You, would, you could drag in a checkbox, uh, if, you know, which could be optional. You would drag in their email, which is right there. You can create text fields, optional text fields. Then, of course, the all-important signature field that you would drag in and the date uh, that it was signed. It's that, it, it really is that easy. And again, this particular document could be a PDF, it could be Word, uh, it could be a, a Google Doc, and so on. So really, really good integrations. Uh, it could be a box note. Uh, really good integrations with, with the various tools. So I won't belabor the, uh, the demo here. I'll just uh, wrap up before I, before I cover off on our offers uh, for nonprofits and, and the, the nonprofit community. Um, with just a, a few final remarks about DocuSign and the power of our technology. Uh, basically, the, the traditional paper-based agreement process has and continues to be in many cases highly manual, slow, expensive, and error-prone. DocuSign eliminates the paper and automates the process, allowing companies to now measure turnaround time in minutes versus days and, and frankly, in some cases, weeks, to substantially re reduce costs, to eliminate errors, so enhance compliance and ultimately uh, serve a, a variety of stakeholders, both employees, um, grant makers, um, and donors, uh, and, and service recipients in many cases uh, much better. And I'll, I'll also just add that you know, while we are used by seven of the top 10 global technology companies, 18 of the top 20 uh, global pharmaceutical companies, 15, uh, 10 of the top 15 global financial services companies, we have uh, customers that are you know, you know, consumers, individuals, all the way up to these uh, you know, Fortune 50 companies. Uh, and the technology is, is, is really uh, flexible in terms of how it can be used and how it can be uh, structured to meet the needs of really any size organization. And finally, before I turn it uh, over to Erin, I just wanted to cover off on uh, the three areas of offerings that we have to the nonprofit community. So our offer through TechSoup, of course, uh, for our standard web product and our business uh, pro edition. The standard web product is uh, fully donated by DocuSign. And then you see uh, one call out there for our, our upcoming Earth Day promotion where we're reducing the admin fee. So those of you familiar with the, the TechSoup model will know that that's uh, about half of what the normal admin fee per license is uh, during that time period. And then in terms of uh, community access, we are offering a limited number of discounted or free passes to Momentum for nonprofits. And finally, in terms of education, if you would like to see uh, some free uh, online courses on how to use DocuSign, if you're interested in digging in a little bit further, uh, you can access those at DocuSign University. So with that, I want to turn it over to Erin from Okta. Great. Thank you, Amy. Um, and hello again, everybody. Uh, so you're, you know what this question is now. We'll do it again for Okta. Um, give you guys a few minutes to respond to if you're using it. I, I have a guess as to where most of you will land, and I, it is proving to be fairly accurate. Um, what is Okta? A lot of people don't know what Okta is. That's okay. Um, I'm going to explain it to you. And I think you know, Okta is, is in some ways more comp complicated to explain than, than Box and DocuSign, but I hope that the context here will, will help you understand how it can be useful. So, um, so great. Thanks for, thanks for answering that. Okay. So now you've decided, right, you, you must have Box to manage all of your files and your collaboration, and you absolutely need DocuSign to streamline your digital signatures. Um, and per perhaps you're already using a handful of other cloud apps, maybe Office 365 or Salesforce or G Suite. Um, so you have solved some very important problems for your organization with these tools, but now you've likely created uh, some new problems. Uh, the first problem is that now you maybe have half a dozen cloud apps in your organization. And for each of those apps, you have dozens of users with unique login details for each. Um, Password requirements, as we all know, uh, are so complex that oftentimes no one can remember their details, and maybe they're overwhelming your um, administrators with password reset requests. Okay, so that's problem number one. Problem number two is security, right? So some of your employees need to access all of these cloud apps. 
Some of them are restricted to only a few. When someone joins your organization, you, know, you want to be able to turn on immediate access to those tools that they need. Um, but perhaps more importantly, when they leave, uh, you want to immediately cut off access to sensitive information and data. right? Uh, and then the third problem is that it's not really just about your employees anymore. Um, more and more, you're expected to reach your volunteers, your donors, your board members, and your partners through cloud technologies. So how in the world do you manage all of this effectively and securely and in a low resource way? So Okta solves these problems, and we solve it through something called identity management. Um, our vision and mission is, is really to enable any organization to use any technology today and in the future, uh, and we are passionate about helping you solve this. We do this by securely connecting an organization's people, that's the identity management part, um, an organization's people to the set of tools that they want to use. Okay? So how do we help? So going back to our problems and looking at our solutions. Um, the first solution is that we help your organization integrate all of, the all of the apps and tools that it needs and streamline password management for users. Um, the second way we help is that we help you to build a secure foundation between your people and your technologies, right? It's enabling you to, to control that access that I talked about based on who the user is, no matter their location, their device, or their network. Um, and the third piece is that we help you easily build secure ways to let you connect with all of your external stakeholders. So really it's about helping you leverage technology to engage all of your stakeholders in your mission. That's what we care about. Okay, and when we talk about Okta and all of those things I just discussed, this is what we really mean, okay? So this is the Okta dashboard. That's what you're looking at. Um, for any user in your organization, they can log in once with a single username and password into this dashboard, um, and this gives them a picture of all the applications that they uniquely need to do their work. So this dashboard illustrates the simplicity of our single sign-on solution from the end user's perspective. And essentially single sign-on just means that you log in once with one password and you never have to log in again. So once you are here and you're logged in, you can seamlessly navigate between Box, DocuSign, Salesforce, whatever you need to do your job without having to log in again. Um, so it really enables your end users, whether they're your employees or your volunteers or, or others, to focus on their work, focus on the mission, uh, rather than have, having to remember all of these different usernames and passwords. Um, the other benefit sort of on the back end is that it helps to free up your IT team's time because they are no longer having to focus on password reset requests um, and time spent providing and revoking access to different applications as people come and go in your organization. So they can use that time to focus on the projects that they value most. Um, and in fact, when we quantify the value of time saved and return to your mission, it can really add up. Um, th these are some results from one of our Okta customers and partners, City Year. Um, this is a nonprofit, for those that don't know City Year, it's a nonprofit that aims to bridge the gap between what students need and what schools are designed to provide. Um, after implementing Okta, City Year saw a 95% reduction in the number of password reset requests which led to $120,000 in annual IT savings. Pretty amazing. Um, so that's one way we help you save time and money. Um, but it's also about productivity, right? Um, City Year realized $175,000 uh, in terms of annual productivity gain for their users because they were spending, time, the, spending their time on the things that, that mattered most. Um, and then we see even more savings related to issues of security and compliance with, this, with the security features of Okta. Um, we have a whole customer um, story and case study written up on City Year. The web link is there. So if you want to learn more and sort of understand more deeply what, what they were looking at and how we help them, feel free to check that out. Okay. Um, so, you know, Lightbox and, and DocuSign, Okta serves thousands of customers across all different industries. Um, but we are especially passionate about helping nonprofits. So 18 months ago, we're sort of the newest kid on the block, at least on this phone call. Um, 18 months ago, Okta took the 1% pledge, as Seema said, and founded Okta for Good as a way to focus our resources on helping nonprofit organizations better manage this mess of technology um, and focus their resources on their missions. So it was actually early customers like Cityer that helped Okta and our leadership 
start to understand the needs of nonprofit organizations and, and start to point the way um, toward the ways that we could maybe help. So since launching Arctic for Good, we've directed over a million dollars of donated technology to hundreds of nonprofits, and I'll, I'll share more details on our offer in a minute. Um, and I just want to say to all of you too, because this is still early for us, um, it's, a, it's an exciting time for Octa for Good because we're at the beginning. Um, our nonprofit customers are not only hopefully benefiting from our technology, but they're actually helping to teach us and helping us to shape our nonprofit offering and our philanthropy work. Um, and so we're really thankful for these, you know, what I would consider partnerships that we are building uh, that are very much bi-directional. So, that's a bit about Octa for Good, and I want to just leave you with a couple of helpful takeaways before I pass it back to Amy. So um, this slide, okay. So the first thing I want to share with you, this is actually a free resource available on Octa's website right now. You can go there and check it out. This is called the Businesses at Work Report. So um, the cool thing when you have thousands and thousands of customers connecting to all of these different technologies is that we as Okta can start to see some interesting patterns in the data. Um, we started the Businesses at Work report several, year, several years ago to help organizations understand what apps and tools were the most popular and the fastest growing. Basically to share some insights with you. Um, and you can go to this tool right now. It's sort of a live and dynamically updated dashboard that pulls all of that data from all of our customers. You can search by type of tool, you can search by industry, including nonprofit, um, and you can really start to see um, if you're short on time and resources, but you, you want to kind of quickly benchmark what the top tools are and get a handle on how you might think about moving to the cloud or leveraging the best in class and best in breed cloud tools. You can see what others are using and sort of make your case. Um, I'm happy to, to sh point out that Box and DocuSign are both on this list here, which is, um, which is Octa's most popular app. So way to go, guys. Good job. Um, anyway, so it's a great tool. It's available now. Please go and use it. Um, and again, as you think holistically about what the cloud is and how you might be able to start to leverage the best and right technologies for you, this is an awesome asset, um, and I encourage you to use it. Okay, so that's thing number one. And then just the last thing is, um, you know, we, we have a, a nonprofit Octa for Good program. We offer 25 licenses of all of Octa's core IT products, including all the things I just kind of reviewed, um, to nonprofit organizations. And then we do discounting uh, above and beyond the 25 licenses should you need more. We also offer 50% off of all of our public training courses. We think educating your teams on how to use Okta and make the most of it is really important, so we do that. Um, and then we also have a customer conference every year called Octane where we invite nonprofits to join us for free. Um, there's more information on the link, and I will pass it back to Amy. Super. Thank you, Erin. You know, I, um, before I dive into one final example uh, of how Box Sign and Octa work together to, to help this nonprofit, and I was reflecting as I was listening to you speak on the, when I joined DocuSign, and we use Octa uh, enterprise-wide, and it was such a foreign concept to me three years ago, and now I just absolutely couldn't do without it. It's so easy um, once you have it and just the, the technology that you all have. So. Um, it was just, just interesting reflecting on that, that first experience of, wait, there are tiles, and it's on this dashboard, and it's all the apps. Um, you guys have really uh, truly innovated in a way that no one else uh, was doing. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Amy, just yeah. out of curiosity, Amy, do you, there had been a couple of questions that had come across the wire from some of our attendees. Should we answer those quickly pre pre the sure. use case review, or should we do it you know, just after? What, what, what would you prefer? Should we do it during the Q&A session, or, or are you, uh, I would are you say, ready to go? Why don't, let's, uh, let's break up the, uh, the uh, talking at with uh, some interaction. I'd love to hear some of the questions. Okay. Just one that I had seen come through was, was directed toward, toward cloud content management area, and that was great questions from Visa uh, and Elaine and a couple of others that were suggesting, you know, how is Box as a content platform unique or separate from Office 365 or G Suite or some of the other platforms that are available in the marketplace? And I'll just answer that really briefly. Uh, the, the, the technologies that help all of uh, your volunteers and teams get productive and build spreadsheets and Word documents and PDFs and presentations 
uh, are, are friendly with, with the Box platform. What we're finding more and more is that consumer technologies and, and technology that were built for individuals like people's Google Drive that they have with their personal Google account, uh, they're working hard to bring those suites into the context of organizations. And Box decided about 10 years ago that it wanted to, to see content management at an organizational level, but keep the ease of use of a lot of those consumer tools. And so the way that, that, that Box as a company has been constructed has been to allow Box as a technology to talk with all of the other technologies that get our people productive and secure. So much like Okta can be the single sign-on for thousands of different applications, Box as a content platform for your organization and become more of a central place for people to collaborate in and manage content. But the places that that content starts could be a Word document or a G suite or a G doc uh, or G sheet. And what we're seeing a lot of organizations start to do because platforms like Box are, are agnostic when it comes to the other platforms that your people might be working in, they will have their OneDrive instance or their Google Drive serve as a personal file drive for those employees or, or regular volunteers, but then the moment something needs to be more organizational, they'll be, they'll be certain that that lives in, in the Box instance. And so Box really is, is forming an organizational content layer, and, and that can often mean that continued use of lots of different platforms for personal storage and lots of different platforms for versioning an individual uh, and separate personal productivity and work can happen in the, in the platforms they're happening in but then when something needs to then get onto the, the organizational radar screen for collaboration or legal review or signatures or DocuSign or whatever else it might be, uh, those organizations are moving those into their more centralized and secure content layers like Box. So maybe a little bit more of a sophisticated answer to the question. We certainly partner closely with Google and Microsoft and have tight integrations into their messaging tools and their productivity tools. But, but again, we, we tend to, to, to exist together in, in, a, in a very much a better together environment, just like the three vendors that, are, that work closely together and have a lot of interoperability on this call. So I'll, I'll end it there. Super, Brian, were there, uh, Brian or Simo, uh, were there other questions that you think we should answer now before I dive into uh, uh, this final example with Team Rubicon? Um, I think if you want to go ahead and like show the example, because I think it'll be helpful for everyone to kind of see, um, okay. you know, what you have here, and then, yeah, in a few minutes we can go through the rest of the questions. Okay, super. I will. Uh, I will do that. So, you know, we've covered off on box content management keys, where your documents are, DocuSign, how you can send documents out for uh, signature, getting more information, and then Okta, that that Uber level of uh, you know, how you control who has access to different tools and information uh, in your ecosystem of, of different, different tools. So one nonprofit that uses all three is Team Rubicon. And so I wanted to cover off on how these three technologies work together to help Team Rubicon save money, save time, and, which is incredibly important to them given that they are an organization that supported veterans as volunteers during times of disaster when time truly is of the essence. So if you think about Team Rubicon, it, Team Rubicon itself as an organization has different has employees and it has different tiers of employees that would require different kinds of access to uh, different tools and different information. And then you have a network of 50,000 volunteers around the world so at different tiers as well, some who are volunteer regional leaders for, for Team Rubicon, uh, conducting management and administrative functions, uh, especially in times of disaster, but may not be the people that are actually being deployed to a particular crisis area. Then you have crisis teams that will have a leader as well as, as different volunteers that opt in to be deployed. So you can see you have a lot of different tiers of folks that need access to different types of information. And then, of course, uh, there, are, there are compliance issues uh, as well, wanting to ensure that people after disasters are deployed quickly and safely. And so if you think about how, excuse me, how uh, Box, DocuSign, and Okta facilitate getting people deployed quickly and safely and delivering aid to people in need uh, with Box. 
So, so let's let's take uh, as an example a tornado hits uh, a tornado several years ago hit Moore, Oklahoma. It's a, a town very close to where I grew up. Uh, Team Rubicon was one of the first responders on the ground there, and one of the ways they were able to do that is that. They have box where from any device, anytime, anywhere, they are able to pull up the deployment instruction and then using DocuSign, send them out to the volunteers that they have in the area so that the volunteers have the right information at the right time and are then, you know, then prompted to initial in various places, sign it in various places to confirm that they understand the instructions. Uh, for deployment, including, of course, the risk of going into a, a live disaster uh, situation. And then, of course, the layer on top is OXA to manage who has access. So when you're dealing with people's personal information in various tools, when you're dealing um, with sensitive information that, that shouldn't be available to even all levels of employees within Team Rubicon, much less different tiers of volunteers, uh, of, a, of a cadre of 50,000 volunteers globally, Okta is really a crucial piece of how you organize and manage that access. So in the interest of time, Seema, I'm going I'm to uh, stop there and turn it back over to you. Okay. All right. Well, okay, we're going to move into the uh, Q&A. So if you guys have questions, um, like I said, there's a chat box on the left-hand side. So now is your chance to get, um, you know, if you have questions about any three of these technologies. Uh, feel free to ask us now. So we have a few that have come in already. Um, so this question is for Okta. Um, so does Okta work with QuickBooks? Um, and it does with, uh, this is Tucker uh, uh, with Okta. Um, it does integrate with the, the cloud version of QuickBooks. Um, it's, a, it's a very simple setup if you have Okta up and running. Um, you, it, it just uh, enables you the first time you log into QuickBooks to store um, and hash your username and password so that you can actually have that secure login access. And I'm going to share a link in, uh, in the chat um, that actually shows where you can search any application to see how it integrates or whether it integrates with a pre-integrated list of over 5,500 cloud-based applications. So it's pretty extensive. Awesome. Okay. Um, and then in terms of like having a trial or is there a way to demo, so this question is for, for all three or four of you, um, you know, is there a way to demo the products before signing up? Yes, the, the, I would just the indicate, short answer is go yes. Ahead. <laughs> Amy, you first. So uh, there, we do have uh, free monthly trials on DocuSign, so yes. And we on the box side of things. Lot. Oh, go ahead, Brian. Nope, you. Uh, same, same answer for Okta. We have a free trial um, on our page that we'll share the link out for it after this webinar. So yes, absolutely. And my suggestion would be to, to create a pre, free personal edition of Box, which we have you know, 50 or 60 million people using today to, to manage some of their personal documentation, files, etc. So a free Box account gives you a really good sense for what the user experience feels like. And just imagine adding a little bit more administrative control and organizational uh, features from there. Great. Cool. And Brian, um, we got a couple of questions. Uh, so someone's asking, uh, Kevin is asking, what is the advantage of having Box versus Dropbox? Yeah, another, another great tech company that, that at minimum is helping a lot of, a lot of individuals and households get their, their pictures and, and important documents up into the cloud. It's just about 10 years ago we had a, a, a very decided on a very divergent business strategy from Dropbox, and that box was really going to get very clear-sighted on the needs of organizations, and that's where HIPAA compliance for people that manage health-related data came in, or or financial institutions that needed, you know, FINRA compliance, or or government entities that needed, you know, various things. Those were the types of investments that we made very very early. Again, just serving organizations, and so. The Dropbox and Box are pretty similar in that we both allow people to, to upload files and store those. It's just you're going to see lots of, of, of functionality that, that pertains to organizations you know, with Box and, and, and doesn't live as much in, in, the, in, the, in the legacy of, of a consumer or, or individual user that, that Dropbox was, was born on. And so if you're a, 
a highly collaborative organization that needs to be able to invite owners into folders and, and kind of regulate their permissions and things of that nature for, say, donors or volunteers and some of those other organizational use cases than, than an organizational solution versus more of an uh, individual or consumer solution may be, uh, may be your best bet. But we very much admire and appreciate the work that they do, and, and Dropbox is doing a lot of, of good work for nonprofits as well. So we've, we've been coaching and mentoring and helping as much as we can, but we do have a, a, a rather unique business model in terms of what makes them different. Got it. Um, we had another question come in for Box, uh, for you, Brian. Um, so can Box share documents with non-licensed users? Yeah, you can. The, the, the donated offering that we, that we provide through TechSoup for, for several thousand organizations is capped at 10 managed or collaborated users. And so again, if you're, if you're one of the organization's managed users that the, the admin of the site creates, you could add yourself and then nine other staff members. Uh, but Box as a technology really starts to set itself apart uh, in the domain of inviting external collaborators into folders to collaborate securely on different files. I had suggested that board use case earlier. In that case that you're going to be adding external non-employee users into the content, you will start to, to count against your 10 managed users in our donated sites. But in our discounted upgraded sites that are also offered through TechSoup, your ability to, with Business Plus or higher, add an unlimited number of external collaborators that may or may not be a part of your external Okta identity uh, system are going to be, uh, you know, you're going to be able to add those into that content. So we very often see a nonprofit organization that's using our 10 donated seeds through TechSoup, and then they get into it for a few months, appreciate it, the ease of use is there, feel comfortable and then realize, well, maybe it's only three or four or five of our staff that really need to be managed users, but the 250 other people that they're coordinating outside of the organization that in the upgraded sites don't cost an, another cent uh, makes the most sense for them. So they'll go forward with a, a smaller site, in some cases upgraded, and then incorporate all of that external collaboration and unlimited storage, I might add, for those heavily discounted upgraded solutions. And Feel free certainly to, to click on contact us at the box.org site for more support on that uh, or send a note directly to, uh, to bb at box.com if your questions you know, go past what, what I just shared. Great. Um, so we have another question. I think this probably applies to uh, all three companies. So you know, in cases where if there's a nonprofit who's in a remote area, where there's limited access, you know, to Wi-Fi, um, in terms of accessibility, you know, to, to box files or to the documents in DocuSign, or maybe somehow needing password access. How does that work when you have like limited connectivity? So, uh, Mamie, if you want to maybe go first. Yeah, I'd be I'd be happy to. So we, uh, as part of a, a product launch or a product release, I should say, last year, we have added the feature that offline feature. So DocuSign works in offline mode. However, the, the caveat is fr from time to time you would need to have uh, connectivity in order for the documents to actually be uploaded to the cloud um, and, and, be, and be, um, you know, be saved in the cloud. So it, it, it will work uh, in the offline environment, but you won't get the, you know, the global accessibility uh, you know, that, that the cloud represents unless you can actually access the cloud. And I would say it's, it's the same for Box. The, the neat thing about Box is that when you start to use the service, your ability to, to add an iOS app or an Android app or your iPad you know, or iPhone app in the iOS environment are all going to have a, a take file offline mode and your ability to move you know, video content or, or PDFs or Word docs or audio files or any of the other hundreds of file types that live on Box into an offline mode is possible. We see that a lot with people that, that get into Jeeps and bump around out in the field doing their important work. But then when they get back to the hotel or the office or the capital city, they're able to, uh, to have the, the system sync up and down with everything that, that they worked on offline. And so there's two or three ways at that. The offline mode is one. And, uh, and again, Box has got some technology like the Box Desktop and Box Sync and a few other Box Edit. There's another number of different features that, that make that, that work really well when you get out of that austere or no bandwidth environment and get some connection to, to move those files up and down. 
And uh, for, for Okta, Okta actually requires very little bandwidth. Um, however, it does require connectivity. Um, when you first log in to Okta, um, let's say, you know, as an internal employee, you log in first thing in the morning, that's the only time you're pinging the Okta servers. Once you're authenticated with Okta, Okta has already done the background, the, the authentication to all these different services. Um, so you're only hitting the servers very briefly, but obviously most of the applications that you'd be using to access uh, via Okta um, would also require connectivity. Great. Okay. So I think we have time for uh, one more question. So um, in terms of, you know, with organizations, there might be a lot of like volunteer turnover or if there's board turnover. So in terms of, you know, users kind of coming in and out, like for all three uh, technologies, how easy is it to kind of, you know, switch over, just keep an inventory of, of the users and, and switch them in and out? Aaron and Tucker, you first. You're the experts there. I'm happy to share our <laughs> yeah. thoughts too. So that's, I mean, that's certainly one of the benefits. We, we call it the single pane of glass to view all users, all usage of any of the applications that someone would be accessing through Okta. Um, so we store all of that data. Um, it's downloadable. Um, and you can see the details of what user was accessing Okta from what device, what IP address, what location. Um, and so we, we, we store all of that information in the Okta service, make it really transparent to, uh, to understand who is accessing which applications. Um, and for many of the applications, this gets a little bit more technical where Okta supports provisioning. Um, and we, in the case of both DocuSign and Box, we do so support provisioning. So if you need to revoke access from DocuSign or Box or other downstream applications, if you suspend or uh, deactivate a user with an Okta, that immediately suspends the access in those downstream applications. So it's a, it's a really nice security measure and prevents that back door that uh, one of the initial slides of the presentation showed. Why does this person who left two months ago still have access to um, email or, or Google Drive or Box or whatever the case may be? Um, and then I'll if you're not, that from the, from the Okta side, um, back to the city year example that I touched on. Um, if you're interested, city year, this was one of the biggest pain points that I think Okta helped solve for them. So city year basically runs on a, a core of you know hundreds of AmeriCorps volunteers that are in the classrooms delivering their programming in schools around the country. And so every school year they've got to onboard. Um, hundreds and hundreds of AmeriCorps volunteers and get them quickly set up with all the applications they need. Um, and then at the end of the school year, they've got to deprovision all of those folks and get ready for the next crop of, of, of volunteers. And so this was something that Okta helped them streamline. And that was a lot of the um, both savings in terms of IT administrative costs, but then also the gains in productivity were based on um, stream, streamlining that sort of onboarding, offboarding of those hundreds of volunteers every year. Um, so if you want to learn more about their use case, it might be relevant for the person who's asking this question. Um, check out the link that, that we included in the slides and, um, and, and see if that answers that in a, sort of a more bring it to life way. Go ahead, Bryce. And that, I was going to say the admin console, the onboard and offboard, does allow you to, to, to do that with Box and, and, and suspend access to things and bump the files that one fundraiser owned, if, if, if perhaps she takes another job and you move it over to another person that comes in, those files can be you know, moved over to, to those individuals. And so that's pretty straightforward. And just gets, uh, there are more and more features that provide more and more ability to do that as you move up into some of the, the more elevated additions that we discount heavily. And certainly the, we're going to be available to answer any other questions. I see a couple of others come in the stream here about partnering with us. Of course, we're receptive. Uh, and then, Somebody had asked there if does having people accessing their box documents via their phone take up another seat or another user in what we donate or discount? And, and, and the average is uh, the answer is no. It's it's going to be a user. That's just another way to make them productive, but but not count against a, a second user of somebody's browser versus their phone. That wouldn't be two users. That would still just be one. Great questions all. Hey okay, Amy, did you want to uh, cover DocuSign or? So a very, very short answer is that you know, Okta is the simplest way to do it. If you have Okta, then you, you can decommission. You know, if someone leaves, then you have access to all the different uh, applications to decommission at once. But within DocuSign, uh, as an administrator, you would be able to uh, revoke that access. Got it. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you to our speakers. Um, that was very Thanks, informative. So, 
Oh, sorry, go ahead, Brian. Did you want to add, add something? No, I just wanted to say we're, we're so grateful to get a chance to, to educate a little bit today. Thanks so much for this opportunity, TechSoup. It's awesome working with you. Yeah, no, it's been great to have you guys here. So um, one thing that's really helpful for us, for those who are still on the line, um, if you want to chat one thing that you learned in today's webinar, it's always fun for us to kind of see, you know, what you got out of, um, you know, the hour today. We also have a post-event survey, so any feedback that you have for us is really helpful, um, and it helps us kind of curate content for the future. So just kind of telling us what was, you know, useful or not useful to you um, is always helpful. If you guys are on social media, uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, we post pretty frequently, and we try to post things that are, you know, helpful to your organization. So. If you are on social media, give us some social media love. Um, and then we also have a blog, which is uh, blog.techsoup.org. We post a lot of tips and tricks there as well. And um, we have a few webinars that are coming up. Uh, we have one on 424, that's a TechSoup tour. Uh, we have one on 51, which is online surveying. 58, get to know grant station, and then 510, the golden keys to successful grants. Um, and lastly, I also want to thank uh, Tucker. Barbara and Lashika, they were on the back end uh, answering chat questions, so that's always helpful to have them here helping us out. And um, if you have any more questions, obviously go to our website um, or our pro product catalog where you can find um, all three of these companies. And um, thank you to our webinar sponsor, ReadyTalk, and we hope to see you guys on the next one. Thank you.